Thank you. Yeah, my, my Discord doesn't like to play nice with me. Um, OK, so hey, everyone. I am uh, Mikkel, actually, um, also known as CryptoSanity. I will be providing a link to my uh, LinkedIn once I get it fully updated. And so you can all see who I am. And actually, Fisk, uh, uh, yeah, Phil didn't even know my, my name until now. So um, yeah, nice to meet you all. Um, so the purpose of this MA, uh, AMA is that the roles that I'm coming on board, um, one will be in the CTO position in order to make sure that everything goes well on, on chain. Um, but the other role that I will be, we be doing particularly in the beginning is around communication and really helping the community come together and start to, to the full governance model. Um, so this, this AMA is actually going to be the first time that I kind of kind of uh, show this new role. Um, I am very well aware that you know we've all just sat through through Phil and uh, a, an hour and a half this this Friday, and there is a lot of information presented. So I'm going to try to keep this as direct and succinct as possible. Um, I have put up a a relaunch FAQ in the channel that you should have all gotten. Um, pinged about. And that really crystallizes some of these, these basic questions that, that I saw popping up. There are other questions that I know that people have that aren't in this FAQ. So really what I would want to start this AMA with is anything around the relaunch. After we talk about the relaunch, which you can just put questions in the AMA channel, then I will open up more broadly if people want to ask questions about um, myself and more in-depth questions about what uh, we see as the future of this of this reboot and particularly this you know I saw a lot of confusion when when Phil mentioned um, trying to compete with like Luna and and what that meant so uh, I can get a little bit into that around the thinking around that so yeah that's definitely how I want to get started um, let me just see real quick whether there's any other, any AMA questions that are up. Um, I don't see any right now, so I'm just going to go right into this FAQ and just do the top, top level, and then we can get into questions from there. So there's so many channels in, <laughs> in our Discord. I'm just trying to find... Fine. Go with it. Okay, so to the relaunch FAQ, the key thing that I want to start with, and this is something that that Phil didn't go into, but I feel is very important. So how this relaunch is is getting initiated is it is basically I approached the core team with this proposal. Um, the the proposal is not just me, it is also some other people that I have on my team uh, that we are working on various other projects. The, the key thing I want to say here is that I had been independently developing with my team a model that was very, very similar to Fiscus. And so that allowed me to really see the potential and see what they were trying to accomplish. And it was basically like point by point, almost everything that we had independently determined was the best way to create a, a, not only a token that could become blue chip, but an entire ecosystem. The pieces that we were missing are the revenue, the consistent revenue driver off chain. So that piece that, that Fiscus is specializing in with, with Princess in particular, that is the key to unlocking the entire model. And so I have been participating in Fiscus since late November, shortly after the NFT sales. And I've just been seeing how things have been evolving and trying to understand whether it matched up with this independent model that we were also creating on the side. And we, we determined that it is, and that after the, the failed launch, I saw that as an opportunity to step forward and say, you know, 
where we really got stuck, where I got stuck personally, was in securing these off-chain deals. And that is that is what they have nailed down. So if I could bring the on-chain side and I could bring the big ecosystem thinking side on-chain, we had the exact same off-chain vision, then that that is a marriage made in heaven. So that that is the number one thing that I want to say. And because we were already developing this project, I had already recruited uh, people from finance and people that have deep networks into capital and and other things, uh, including development, uh, to be able to execute on that other project. So I'm bringing that entire network in. However, there is a challenge. And the challenge is that in order for this to work, we need to start on a clean slate. So the, the thing that I want to make very important, <laughs> crystal clear, is that the, because the entire model is driven by the off-chain, we need to have the off-chain capital commitments completely sorted, at least, at least for the initial launch. Now, talking with, with Phil and Princess, it sounds like they've made amazing progress there. And they're very close. So that, how close they are, gave my side, my team, confidence to be able to step forward and become and go public with this. Once that is in place, then the second piece is that we need to have sufficient capital injected to be able to pay for everyone that wants refunds. So right now, that does not exist. In the in the fiscus treasury, but with the combined efforts of of my side and and fiscus, I have extreme confidence that if we we come with a clean model, we have a clean, strong community of people that want to go forward, as well as an a a close figure of how much we need to raise in order to do all the refunds, then we can start on a, on a clean slate. This, uh, this piece of, of taking in new capital to pay out other people in terms of refunds, I'm, I'm just going to be honest here. This is something that traditionally is very, very hard to find investors to do. They, they, in my opinion, they're almost pathological about it. I have had past experience where I've had um, a, a startup that had had a similar th issue of a deal falling through right at the last second, um, needed to recover, and I put everything back together but couldn't find people to buy out the old investors, and we just got stuck, even though the the rewards were very great going forward. So I'm just going to I'm just going to be 100% upfront and say that while we have great confidence that we can achieve this, especially because crypto is a bit different, that I can't guarantee 100% that it will happen. So everything that we talk about right now, it is the proposal that uh, Phil and Princess is working with me and, and my team, and we're going to be presenting to primarily on-chain capital providers to be able to try to to relaunch if there if we can for some reason we cannot cover all refunds that are requested we will have to make adjustments to this there, there's just no way we will have no we, we have limited flexibility here however once again i'm confident that we can move forward with this so with that out of the way um just top line around the details as as Phil said, we'll be opening refunds for PFIS at five or at six dollars per token. The reason why six dollars is there is because that represents the five dollars per token uh, NFT buying at the NFT price plus a twenty percent profit. We want to make sure that everyone that's stuck in and held that you can at least exit with some modest profit. You can refund some or all of your PFISC. 
it's up to you. As terms of in terms of whitelist participants, we want to be able to get to the fifteen dollar per price uh, per token price for refunds, but this is going to be determined based on how much capital we can raise. Um, in any case, we'll make sure that that value is provided somehow. The ultimate goal here is to get rid of distinguishment between LBP, whitelist, and NFT holders, and going forward, that everyone has is treated equally, and that we basically say, everyone that has been in so far, you're getting the same value that you, you uh, have put in. Uh, once all, all PFISC that is not refunded will be transferred to a new token on launch, this will include the rebases that have been promised, you know, around 2.5, but that will be vested over time. What those vestment arrangements look like is to be determined. Here, here's the key thing that I, I want to also make clear. The refunds do not include rebasing. So it is just a straight six dollars per PFISC. It's not if you it's not like you have you bought one PFISC and it's now worth two point five and and we're paying six dollars for each each one of those. Um some other things are just around I know that I've I've seen this going on around the failed launch. The idea is to wipe everything clean. So the, we we would refund all buy all buys. Uh, if there's a buy and sale, we'll we'll try to like get all that sort of just just swipe clean, just get back to square one. And then in terms of timing, there we need to, uh, as I said, we need to confirm that the off chain capital is there, and then we need to secure an initial amount of refunds base capital that we that is proportional to the amount of requested refunds at that point we'll open up a two-week window for anyone to be able to request refunds or you can actually buy in if you want to increase your holdings during that two weeks we'll be spending a lot of time on education to make sure that everyone understands why fiscus is a once in a lifetime opportunity and I'm going to personally be putting a lot of time and effort into communicating this because, as I said, it's something that I was developing independently. And so I, I am very, uh, I, I, I really understand how this thing works and I really understand the potential here and it is very special. So I will be putting, I will ensure that I work with the community so you all have the understanding exactly that, about that potential so you can make a fully informed choice about whether to get a refund or not. After that two week window, Fiscus will go private. Discord will be invite only. It'll no, be no longer possible to buy PHISC. Only after those funding cycles are complete, then we will relaunch. And we won't relaunch until we have code that is fully audited and the new the new model is is implemented on chain. As Phil said, there will be revenue that's getting generated while private. And so there there are to be determined aspects here where as token holders and particularly as NFT holders you will be able to receive some of that real revenue that's being generated before we relaunch. So we want to make sure that as soon as possible, you're getting value out of your, your tokens and your NFTs. But we want to make sure that on the on-chain side, we are 100% positioned to be massive. And this is really the, the key thing that I am driving is that the on-chain is no longer just a way of you know, easily uh, capturing the value that's being created off-chain, but that there's actually a full on-chain ecosystem that can compete with the top names in crypto.
as far as the NFTs, uh, they will remain in some form. And when I say some form, what I mean is I agree with Phil that it'd be really awesome to have governance with them. It'd be really awesome to have generational wealth revolve around them and other things. However, the the structure of it, what we need to ensure is we need to ensure that there is um, I'm not sure what the right word is. I want to say fairness, but it's it's beyond fairness. We need to make sure that NFT holders are the are held by people that have the the greatest uh, commitment and value add to the community. And so a concern that I have right now is how many NFT T's might be held by people that um, aren't going to be providing a lot of value going forward. And I want to ensure that it doesn't become just a game of you have to have the most money in order to be able to to buy these NFTs to participate and, and get this value add. So this is why we're not giving specifics yet on exactly how the NFTs work, because we haven't really figured that part out. What I will say is, regardless of the role that NFTs play, we will make sure that value is returned to them that is is commensurate with whatever you might have invested. So just to be very clear on what, what that what that looked like, at the very minimum, it would be basically the, the protocol fiscus rebuying all the NFTs at a multiplier of of the amount that was paid for them and doing that from from real cash flows. That's the bare minimum. We're trying to create more than that, but but we will see. If you're an NFT holder, it's completely separate from the PFISC refunds. You can you can request refunds, you can hold on your NFT onto your NFT. And like I said, no matter what, we'll make sure that value goes to those NFTs. Okay. I'm gonna stop right here before I get into the new token model and things like that. I'm then I'm gonna look at anything around the AMA questions. Okay. So since we're waiting a few cycles before launch, will the NFT holders be receiving uh, rewards? And yes, that they would definitely be receiving rewards. Like I said, it's to be determined whether that's in the current structure or whether that would be more like a, a buyout structure where we, we retire the NFTs as they are and, and just give you um, a set amount. That's to be determined. Yes, this AMA is being recorded. And the buy-in price during refunds will definitely, we, we are definitely aiming to have them be above $6. So let me just say a general principle here. The general principle that we're aiming for is that every early fiscalite is going to be in a, in a best position um, compared to, to new investors coming in. I'm going to be pushing for a relatively high token price to to buy in at in order to be able to um, really set the the protocol up the best that it could. But that is something that we're gonna we're gonna need to see what we can uh, we we can um, negotiate. However, definitely, I think we can get above six dollars a token. So as far as the relaunch price, though, it will definitely be reevaluated. Re and this is where we can get into the tokenomics. Um, afterwards, I'll, I'll go more into that. But really, the, re the, the price is going to be determined by the actual real world cash flows. So we can't say what that is yet. Um, as far as here, here's uh, Beetlejuice pointing out that anyone that bought an original NFT getting PFISC for free, or that also got PFISC, they can basically get the NFT for free by refunding the PFISC. Um, yes, yes, we are definitely aware of that. Um, this is 
this is something that we briefly talked about, whether we should try to say, like, you know, handle them separately, uh, like handle them together and things like that. But it becomes very challenging because some people have, have still done private sales of their NFTs and, the, and, and PFISC and like all this other stuff. Um, so we're just going to treat them separately and just focus on PFISC. If you're an NFT holder and you want to uh, return all your, your NFTs and basically get uh, all your PFISC and basically get a free NFT, like that's just what you get for being um, one of the earliest. Um, okay, I just see some back and forth <laughs> about that. Okay, are there any other questions? If you have any other questions, put them in to the AMA channel. Okay. <laughs> Now some people are asking for something about me personally. Um, I, I will get to that in a little bit. Okay, I'm I'm going to pull this one. I think it looks like there's enough around just the just the the tokenomics. So I'll get to this question. Can I elaborate about competing with Luna? Um, the first thing is I'm going to be releasing uh, slides and also a medium articles or probably several of them talking more about this in the next week so if there's any details here that you know sound confusing or whatever then you know you're going to get a lot of supplementary material but the basic thing to understand is that the the key thing behind the Terra ecosystem if you strip everything else away if you if anyone knows like the how the the relationship between Luna and UST works and how UST is algorithmic stablecoin, like uh, just set that aside. At the key thing, why it works, not how it works, but why it works. The reason why it works is because they are a payment processor. So Terra on the Terra network, they have they process tens of billions of dollars um, every year, and it's rapidly growing. They're they're a relatively major provider in I think South Korea is is their biggest place right now, but they're they're growing throughout Asia. Their vision is to become the cheapest, fastest payment processor in the world, and take a major part of that. Uh, that industry. The way that their model works, that, that, that we all talk about in the crypto world, it can be funded and supported because of that real world activity, because of their business model. And then they just have a mechanism of all this other stuff in order to be capital efficient in terms of doing it. So the holding that in your mind, the way that Fiscus is similar is that Fiscus has an immense real world income stream flowing into it. And it is much, much better than payment processing. Project financing is incredible because the deals are massive. The margins are huge, and it is a very, very niche industry, meaning that there's major barriers to competition. This is, this is double for what Fiscus is setting up, because they're not even going to traditional project financers. They're actually creating these long-term relationships built on philosophy around making a better world and serving communities that 
are traditionally underserved. There are tens of billions of dollars of capital sitting there right now actively looking for projects. I know this because I I have uh, models that can plug into this financing and have the same philosophical aims. But more than just the money that is sitting there right now trying to find these projects, it is the fastest growing segment in all of finance. And soon it will be the fastest growing finance segment ever seen in history. Why? Because transitioning off of carbon and doing it in a way that reduces inequality is the primary goal for all of society through the rest of this century and particularly through the next 30 years. So right now, and I'm going to be, I'm putting up um, medium articles about this right now, They've identified there's a need for 100 to $150 trillion over the next 30 years into this particular form of project financing. This is exactly what traditional project financers do not have the skills or the constitution to even be able to take advantage of this. And where Fiscus, working with what I'm ter ter uh, terming courageous capital, meaning these large capital providers that are willing to get in front of this and position themselves for it, this is where it could be, become a dominant player in this entire movement. So because of that, there is going to be immense uh, there's immense potential for having uh, off-chain profits flowing in that are more or less boundless. And from that, we can capture that on-chain in a way that is similar but not identical to the way that Terra translates off-chain activity onto on-chain value through the Luna and UST. So I'm not going to get into specifics right now about the actual tokenomics, uh, because I think that's difficult to communicate over voice. But on a, on a model level, on a, on a, uh, on a uh, energy level of how that all works, of where the cash flow goes, and how that gets into on-chain, we're going to be emulating, not copying, the Terra Luna ecosystem. And we're going to be doing it in a way that provides more stability and more trust than Terra Luna has. So that, that is my answer to that. Um, OK. Are there any questions just around that opportunity, uh, around just the, the, the Terra and Luna part? And if not, I, I will talk a little bit about myself. I'm just waiting for uh, someone that's typing. No pressure. OK, I'll start talking about my myself and then um, go back to, to see if there <laughs> if all this typing is is talking about uh, the, uh, okay, cool. Yeah, we, we will definitely release a white paper on the tokenomics. Okay, so now I'll talk about myself and my team because that's, that's where most of these are. So for me personally, so I have a background in, in science and engineering. 
um, my original uh, foray into the world was that I worked in world-class biomedical research as well as um, cross cross research into several other uh, ever, several other disciplines. So that actually is giving me a network of um, connections with with top uh, science and and engineers uh, across the entire world. So I know basically most of the opportunities that are coming out um, and and all of the things that we that have Im immense potential uh, for the world, but yet have not yet become into the, gone into the world. Um, I got so frustrated by all this immense opportunity that wasn't actually helping anyone because uh, it would go basically because the the oligarchical <laughs> structure of of these industries like healthcare, energy, food, etc. I uh, just don't have any any reason to um, that I quit that industry and I went into startups and trying to figure out how to do it through uh, startups. So to make a long story short, I have been in the startup space as well as the the uh, digital transformation space, which is a buzzword for when you go into major corporations that are um, old and creaking and help them figure out how to redo their business model and uh, operations for, for the digital world. I've been doing that for now uh, almost 15 years. I have been an early stage employer uh, employee in several startups, including uh, a Silicon Valley unicorn, um, as well as right now I'm actually CTO in in a Silicon Valley venture uh, venture funded company that's funded by the titans of, of Silicon Valley like uh, Paul Graham and, and Naval Ravikant and 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 so forth um, there. So we we were actually uh, scaling scaling that venture very soon, getting good traction there. Um, and so yeah, so my my background is really around like starting from from an idea, a concept, and figuring out how to make widespread industry connections and then take that to multi-billion dollar um, outcomes or in, in this, you know, potentially in this case, multi-trillion dollar outcomes. And so that's, that's really what my niche is and that's really what my specialization is. Um, on, on top of that, I have been developing a team to i've 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 been in the crypto space uh for almost a year now and i basically developed a team to to create a, a new protocol a new product within the crypto space i am the ceo of that product of that project um we have some of the t the top developers as well as uh partnerships that we are uh, developing with with some of the top names in crypto, um, and so I'll be bringing all that to the table. I'll be sharing the link on what that project is and why we are very excited by that project as well. Um, through that, that's given me a lot of connections through DeFi and uh, traditional uh, people that basically have traditional finance backgrounds that jumped into crypto, as well as uh other high level people that that do various things and so parts of my team they will be supporting me in in this effort into fiscus one thing that i want to make clear is that that and this is something that we are um that phil and princess are perfectly aware of is that i'm not necessarily going to be like the main person doing all of the things that that I'm talking about, it is that I'm going to be having responsibility and accountability and and vision over these various aspects. That means that I'll be taking a very hands-on role in the beginning. But as more resources become available, as more clarity is is um, is found, that I'll be hiring in 
the the perfect people into various various positions in order to to really start scaling this and take it to to its full organizational potential. So yeah, so based on my background, like that's really where I uh, that's really where I fit is to to put in the early energy and then to be able to hire in the people that can can really take it to its its full potential. Um, okay. So let me see. Uh, in terms of my past failures, <laughs> I'm going to start. People are asking about past successes and past failures. I'm going to start with my past failure because uh, it is most applicable to to the fiscus situation. So I I have developed a, a model and and technology that can basically revolutionize the food system and how food distribution works and um and it would be able to greatly reduce food waste uh be able to reduce food prices and increase profits for everyone in the entire system so it it would basically be a massive win for for all involved uh this system i I have worked with uh, various major uh, grocery chains, suppliers, policymakers, ex um, <laughs> finance people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, everybody agrees that it would work. Nobody, there is no question at all of whether the mechanism would work. None. I have had conversations where I, I, can, I can get access to billions of dollars to be able to, to uh, implement it at scale. However, it is not yet in the world, despite the fact that I've, I've put 10 years into it. And why? Well, there are two reasons. One reason was that it was the first major startup that I was involved in. And so therefore, I wasn't careful about who I worked with on the team. And there was a lot of team drama and a lot of momentum that got lost uh, in that. And so we, we had a lot of early momentum. We had some, we had some decent resourcing. We, we were unable to, to keep that momentum up and we kind of got stuck. The second piece of it is, as I stepped up in, in, in that startup, I was not in an executive role. As I stepped up into an executive role, I spent a lot of time recreating uh, or I, I, uh, building new potential. And just like with Viscus, I had a lot of, of commitment from big players, but we needed to get small players going in order to unlock early stage financing. Unfortunately, at the very last moment, due to circumstances completely out of our control, we had, everything was done on our side. All of the early projects that we had pulled out for different reasons on their side. And so therefore our financing fell through and we had team members that just needed to leave because they just, they just put in too much time and, and energy and, and they, just, they just needed to leave. What that's done is that's created a situation where it was very difficult to move forward because we had investors that were clinging on to their position and not able, not basically not a, not letting me have the the freedom that I needed in order to be able to create something new with a new team. And I and although I had secured new funding, substantial new funding to get going and and with new partners, that funding they were they would not give us that funding until I had a new team in place, and my and my old team had too much equity. So. How that relates to Fiscus is 
it's a very similar situation where I understand exactly what funding people are looking for, exactly what needs to be done in order to start with a clean slate, and exactly what will happen if we don't have a clean slate. And I can tell you right now, if you don't get a clean slate, it just, you just get stuck forever. I still really, really want to get this, this project of mine into the world. And the only way I see it can see it getting done is for me personally to just get so much resource that I can just go and buy everyone out and then just like relaunch it. And that's the only, that's the only path forward. Fortunately for Fiscus, with everything that's in place, with the fact it's in crypto, et cetera, I think that we can, we can move forward uh, easily now with that um, by getting other on-chain investors. So that failure, that frustration has, um, makes me both very sympathetic to the situation as well as having clear understanding of what's needed. In terms of successes, I'll be sharing more about this, but um, like I said, I've been early stage uh, employee and and now executive in um, in projects that that became uh, you know multi billion dollar companies. Um, my, my current project's not yet there, but it's is very much on the path to being there, as well as as working uh, top level with with major uh, companies. I was the I was the chief um, technical person that made one of the early big data platforms that eventually got a substantial number of the Fortune 500 um, companies on that, including Microsoft, where we uh, our product actually beat Microsoft's own internal solution. They had 300 people working on the product. We had five, our team of five. They went with us over their own team of 300 people. Um, so I, I'll be, I can give more details about that. But I'm, I'm just going to, to look, quickly look through now other, other questions. Um, OK. So I want to like, I want to wrap this up pretty soon here because I, I want to keep this like somewhat crisp. But I do think that that this question about um, about where the project is currently at and any areas that are lacking and why this new model, uh, like, like what has changed. I think this is an important, um, important question that gets to the heart of things. So I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to speak to this and then I think any other details, unless there's something um, super pressing, then, then we'll end right there. So. The one thing that I want to say is, and again, this is what I've experienced a lot in the startup world and, and can be very difficult for, for people to, uh, to understand that aren't in the startup world, is that when you're creating what they call scalable ventures, meaning ventures that are able to, to reach billions, tens of billions, hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in valuation, it is very very, very rarely do you ever have an idea and a model that you just do it and it just works the first time. That almost never happens. Instead, what happens is you either have a team where that team has skills and people in it that are just world class and the team just works together to find something that that works and sometimes like like literally in my current venture um the 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 founder he was just handed millions of dollars based on who he who he was and that's it and 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 when he hired me in to become CTO it was completely different business than what he he originally had pitched but they they hired it based on the founder that is one model. The other way is around a particular industry or, or philosophy around something that is very fundamental 
that if it works, it has huge potential. That is the other way of, of raising money in the startup world. In either case, there is one mission and only one mission that you have, and it is to achieve what they call product market fit. The definition of product market fit is to find a product that is worthwhile, that people are willing to pay for, that has long-term potential, and what we, what we would call tokenomics, <laughs> but they call the business model, has some model behind it that drives everything forward. A lot of times, you will need to tweak the product, or you'll need to tweak the business model. Sometimes you have to do radical restructuring. But once you achieve product market fit, it is at that point that everything becomes set in stone for what the company is and how it goes forward. So all of this, like these questions around, like we keep changing, you know, changing numbers and, and, and tokenomics and like uh, what do NFTs mean and whatever, that is just part of the normal process of doing a venture scale startup, which is how I think about Fiscus. The second that you can get product market fit, which in this case, who are our primary customers, our primary customers are not anyone listening to me right now, unless you are a project developer or a financer, a finance person. You're, you're not the people that, that make Fiscus a success. The actual customers are the, the, the project developers and these big project finance people. The second that they can close that off-chain aspect and that we can pull on-chain capital based off of a model that convinces other on-chain investors that have these deep networks to do new projects, that would be the definition of product market fit in, in this instance for Fiscus. And at that point, our model would be set. So on one level, Fiscus has never been in danger because as long as Princess and Phil keep pushing forward with the off-chain part, as long as they keep uh, having that that potential, and as long as they can close there, we can create anything around that and succeed. But on the other hand, in order for them to do that, the stronger that we can have on-chain, the stronger that we can have a strong leadership team, the, the, the more that we can articulate why this isn't just a billion dollar opportunity, but potentially a hundred billion dollar opportunity, and show the on-chain aspect, that piece is, is needed for the product market fit. And so in, in, it is that piece where there has been all of the grinding. <laughs> how do you actually launch on-chain? How, how do you secure the, the, the necessary expertise and connections on-chain? How do you articulate the tokenomics model? and ensure that the tokenomics model doesn't burn itself out. And so that is, that is basically the proposal that, that I came forward with to, to Princess and Phil and why, um, why they, they, they clearly saw that very quickly <laughs> and saw how, how well aligned we were on the overall potential and why there has been such a big shift in, in possibility. Because if we can get this reboot, we can get so much support off on-chain and off-chain that then we will be solid, clear, consistent going forward, potentially for decades. OK. So. In terms of the one last piece that I would just want to say here, and, and I see in this question, um, around the key areas that are lacking, 
the the part that has been unlocking in my perspective has definitely been been the on-chain part not just in terms of development but also in terms of understanding the um the the crypto culture and and and, and crypto potential and um standards and things like that and that is very much what i I see myself um, stepping forward uh, to 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 first fill and then eventually um, make sure that that we have plenty of people and, and very deep networks that can support that and be fully integrated on the on-chain side. Um, and then also a a big gap that I've seen is communication around the potential of Fiscus. Uh, Phil has done an amazing job of being extremely innovative and putting together all the pieces, but there hasn't been a clear, crisp communication around this is why it's so big and this is why the world needs it. And so really getting getting those communications um, squared away and then having very strong marketing that can just hammer that everywhere and can just cut through the noise and has the connections to be able to do that that is the the piece that is currently missing um which i'll be talking with with the core team around and unfortunately i i don't even have that right now in my in my network around that 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 marketing side that can can just do yeah can just get straight through the noise and and get us in front of everyone that that needs to hear about it so that would be something that if there's anyone in the community um, I think we will definitely need that primarily on the on-chain side. On the off-chain side, the connections that um, that uh, Princess and, and Phil and, and even myself through my network have is just like top-notch. It's just like world-class. So, so in terms of that, um, we're perfect. It's just building, building this on-chain potential and, and this overall marketing. Um okay, so I think I think that feels like enough for me. <laughs> um I'm uh I'm pretty much spent out of energy and and um we've been going on for a while. So yeah, so if the any all these other questions I'm going to to jump into the Discord and, and answer um them and then everything that that we've talked about. I will make sure to to add to the FAQ, um, and then in the in the forthcoming uh, week, um, we'll be releasing materials around the communication part around like why is Fiscus so amazing, and then also around this new new token model. I've already presented, already made like a pitch pitch deck and and shown that to um, to Phil and. You know, and he just got it. He's like, "Oh yes." <laughs> He's like, "This is, this is what I've I've been seeing." So it was like, "This is exactly where I saw the potential," and this just brings it all together. Um, and so yeah, I'll be. I'm just waiting for a few things. Um, but then we will be, we're releasing that, and then from there we can get into more details around how the the proposed tech tokenomics will be, but um something that I just want to like really reemphasize here is is that because this is built around real world activity then then the tokenomics are important but unlike most uh, DeFi or other projects that you you might have been in um, it's not only about tokenomics um, and so we'll definitely make sure to to work as a community to go through and 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 refine the tokenomics and and make them as perfect as can be, but also having much more education about the off-chain aspects and just the overall um, global climate and 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 future <laughs> um, uh, opportunity it, it will be boosted as well, and that's something I'll work with the team on communicating that. Um, all with the idea that by the time that we have these uh, the the refund windows open, then everyone can make a decision, and also so that uh, hopefully 
and this is so, it's something that I need to discuss um, with the team, but also to to uh, work to create a very strong community. So when we bring in uh, potential new investors, uh, and they they can uh, you know really see where the community is at, and and get a good feeling from the community as well as ask very hard hitting questions to the community and uh you know make a decision from there okay um so thank you everyone and i will yeah i'll jump into this cord and answer some of these other questions and uh see you see you over the next few weeks awesome let me jump into here just as an ending, thank you everybody for for being here, um, and for and for listening and asking those questions. Uh, there's a the element that that he highlighted is, you know, when you when you see something and you know and you see it's far superior and you see that it is the the culmination of your thought that you have trouble expressing. You know, that's that's something that there is now this this dynamic. And there is this kind of synergy that's there from the from the on-chain element that is going to to really just amplify us.